I welcome in to another day of your daily Devo. My name is Pastor Rick, and we are in Hosea chapter 12. I've got two more, three more chapters. So we're going to finish this one by the end of the week. It's going to be very exciting. So hope you are uh, having a good time journeying through this book. Hope you're learning something. Uh, if you're enjoying this little series, why don't you drop an amen in the comments. It'll be great to hear from you. And uh, feel free to like and subscribe and comment and share with your friends. This is a great way to support these videos to help them get out to more people. So if you could do that, that would be awesome. Click it, click it right now. Like the video. Okay, anyways. So we're going to go ahead and start in uh, Hosea chapter 12. So here we go. Uh, Ephraim chases the wind and pursues the east wind. Continually multiplies lies and violence, makes a covenant, makes a covenant with Assyria, and olive oil is carried to Egypt. So again, just like threefold, threefold like challenges going on here. Chasing the wind, which is like just the essence of getting sucked into a life of sin and rebellion against God, it causes you to lose all of your senses in regards to what is actually right and meaningful and good. And so they end up pursuing things that are empty, pursuing things that will never fill them. And isn't that just the total picture of sin and depravity in, in our lives is that it's garbage. Like it looks cool on the outside, but when you get it, when you actually have it, it it's like something that you end up desiring so much because it looks like how how could I possibly live without that? How could I possibly function? But then when you get it and you feel it and you you know like and you're like oh this isn't this isn't what I thought it would be. This is not what I expected. So that's you know chasing the wind and pursuing the wind and continually multiplying lies and violence because I mean again shame comes in and you try to hide stuff you try to save face so you're you're not looking bad so you're you're lying and sometimes that leads to violence because you know you're trying to protect yourself this is bad news he makes a covenant with Assyria now you're now you're really making bad decisions because you're you're partnering up with people that have nothing but your very destruction in mind. And then this whole olive oil carried to Egypt signifies a, like a trading relationship with Egypt. And again, if you remember, Egypt is the, the nation that had them in slavery for almost half of a millennia. You know, it's like, come on now, people. <clears throat> Let's think it through here. Let's think it through. Like, you really want to take your precious aromatic oils and you want to send them to the land where they kept you in bondage for 430 years, give or take. So the Lord also has a dispute with Judah. He's about to punish Jacob according to his conduct. He will repay him based on his actions. So there's some responsibility going on here for your actions. It's not like you can just take this blank check, you know, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And so I can just live however I want and do whatever I want. No, like there is a, there's a repayment that comes not in the sense of, you know, like if you have received the, the sacrifice of Jesus on your life, then there is a, an element obviously of having that washed away from an eternal standpoint, from like from the eternal uh, penalty of that sin. However, there's definitely, certainly still a natural here and now consequence that you have to deal with, price that has to be paid in the natural because of those actions. In the womb, Jacob grasped his brother's heel. As an adult, he wrestled with God. Jacob struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought his favor. He found him at Bethel, and there he spoke with him. So it's interesting that uh, Jacob's struggle and wrestling with God, with the angel, and prevailing isn't the thing that won him the blessing. 
his blessing didn't come until after he was like really broken he wept and sought his favor you know like that it because humility comes before honor and he was finally made humble in that situation besides the fact the whole prevailing was he was allowed he was allowed to prevail he found him at bethel that was just one of those places where jacob encountered god big time and there he spoke with him the lord is the god of armies the lord is his name but you must return to your god maintain love and justice and always put your hope in god and so these first five verses are just going through like Let's just recap your history, y'all. Like, let's talk about your history and let's talk about where you encountered me, where you met me, where you spoke to me. Let's remind you who I am. I'm the God of arm the the God of armies. The Lord is my name. Yahweh is my name. Like that name that you don't even want to say out loud because you have so much honor and respect for it. And then verse six, it's like the action I want you to take now after having reflected on where you've been and who you are and who I am. So I want you to return to me. I want you to maintain love and justice. And then always put your hope in God. Always put your hope in God. Always put your hope in God. Because obviously when up here, when they're pursuing the wind, making a covenant with Assyria, being, you know, trading with Egypt, they're not, they're not hoping in God. They're hoping in trying to establish relationships with these countries to keep themselves alive, right? Because, oh, Assyria is terrible and violent. And so we're going to go ahead and go, we're going to go make a covenant with them, make a, make a treaty with them. We're going to go protect ourselves. We're going to go concoct a plan. To keep us safe. Not recognizing that, you know, you don't actually have the power and the authority to do that. So I'm telling you, return to your God and always put your hope in him. That's the ticket here, folks. Like that's that's the win. A merchant loves to extort with dishonest scales in his hands. But Ephraim thinks, how rich I have become. I made it all myself. In all my earnings, no one can find any iniquity in me that I can be punished for. So, I mean, goodness gracious. You've got, you've got this obvious lack of humility. How, how rich I have become. And then you have um, self-aggrandizement right here like crazy. Like, I made it all myself. And then this total self-deception. Nobody can find any iniquity in me that I can be punished for. <laughs> like, come on, man. Are you kidding me? Like, what are you thinking? And how do you let yourself get to this place? So, again, put your hope in God. Return to God. Put your hope in God. Maintain love and justice. But, man, you got to you gotta stay humble. You got to recognize, you know, the Bible also tells us that it is God that gives us the power to get wealth. So any earnings you have, any success you have, any riches you have accomplished, have accumulated, is only a result of God's goodness and graciousness and faithfulness and favor in your life. And you would do well to give him credit for it and thank him for it and praise him for it and worship him for it. God, thank you for your goodness to me. Thank you for allowing me to have that creative idea, to create that product, to sell that thing, to start that company. You know, whatever whatever the situation might be that is causing that uh, material money gain in, the, in there. I have been the Lord your God ever since the land of Egypt, and I will make you live in tents again as in the festival days, the festival of shelters festival of tents where they would live in tents to commemorate their journey through the wilderness because god wants them to remember where he has taken them from what he has taken them through so that they would have faith and confidence in who he is to continue to take them 
into their future rather than taking things into their own hands and being unfaithful to him. He said, just return to me and trust me and love and believe me. Like, I've got you. Haven't you? Can't you? Can't you look back over your past? Can't you look back at all of that and say, wow, we serve an awesome God that takes great care of us. That's what I want you to do, you know. So let's see. I will speak through the prophets and grant many visions and I will give parables through the prophets. Just again, like. He just wants to speak to them. He wants to break through into their world. So he's like, I'm speaking through the prophets. I'm granting many visions. Give parables, these stories. I mean, shoot, I had I had Hosea go and marry Gomer just to give you that object lesson to show you what's going on in your life. Like, that's how much I care about you, that I would put things even to that extent to help make sure you know exactly what's going on. God loves them and he's trying to pursue them to bring them back. Since Gilead is full of evil, they will certainly come to nothing. They sacrifice bulls in Gilgal. Even their altars will be like piles of rocks on the furrows of a field. Gilgal was just a place where there was a lot of idol worship and sacrifice going on. And so, um, so you're just saying they're, they're jumping in on that. You know, they're becoming a part of that. Um, and Gilgal actually was the place where they originally uh, circumcised themselves before going into the land of Canaan. And so there's even some kind of like you know, a little picture of kind of going backwards, you know, going backwards to where they, where they, uh, where their ancestors had like identified themselves with a covenant with God. They're going back to this place and they're sacrificing bulls and Gilgal, like to idols. And so it's like, man, it's a, it's a really poignant picture of their relate, where their relationship was with God at the time. Jacob fled to the territory of Aram. Israel worked to earn a wife, and he tended flocks for a wife. The Lord brought Israel from Egypt by a prophet, and Israel was tended by a prophet. Ephraim was provoked, has provoked bitter anger, so his Lord will leave his blood guilt on him and repay him for his contempt. So it's like, even though, even though I brought you from Egypt by a prophet, appointed Moses to come and get you, and then Even since then, I've tended you, I've maintained you, I've continued to bring you along by a prophet, by the word of God, by communicating with you. And how do you, how do you respond? But you provoke bitter anger. So I'm going to leave your blood guilt on you and repay you for your contempt. So let's be a people that don't, that don't maintain contempt for God. Like let's. Let's be a people that respond to the word of God. Even as you're reading this today, ask the Lord, you know, what areas of my life are out of whack? I mean, are you successful today? And are you giving yourself all the credit for all that success? Are you recognizing that God's the one that brought it to you? So let's be a humble people. And then coming back here, return to your God maintain love and justice and always put your hope in God. Amen. All right. I hope you have a great day. Hope you are encouraged. A little special shout out to Mason and Linda for providing my new hat. Got my friend Bucky on my hat. So, um, let's go Bucky. But, um, no, seriously, God bless you today. May he bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to give you peace. Let's go have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.